wise word. It's a pleasure. It's a great pleasure to see familiar faces, but it's a pleasure because those two men, Bianca Laverne Jones and Joseph Cannon. Isn't Joseph fine? Yeah. What advice would you give to a young girl that wants to become an actress? I think whenever you have a, a dream, uh, it is very vital that you hold on tight with both hands and you don't let go. We fear what we don't understand. And to be an artist is not for everyone. Like me. I was fortunate enough to have the most amazing grandparents who raised me who allowed me to dream. And I think that's the key, no matter what it is. It doesn't matter if anyone else gets it. That's what's irrelevant, you know, and I think that's what helped me. I didn't care if anyone else understood what I wanted to do. Even when I came to the audition, as I was rolling past every guy, I looked up and said thank you, because I knew that they did not believe the dream hard enough. What was it like having her as a director? <laughs> it's very easy because I, I'm pretty much riding on their coattail. Because Phyllis is a fantastic director and a wonderful mentor, and Bianca, as you saw, is an outstanding actress. And uh, it was just an honor. Woo! The with Phyllis is a little different because it started off. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> all right, Phyllis. Uh -oh. Let me just tell you this story real quick. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> about just I'm having auditions in LA for a guy who was in the military. So I have, of course, all these guys who have cut up arms, summits, coming in with tank tops, wanting this role. As you, I'm sitting there like, wow, okay. Mm. Person that <laughs> And Joseph, uh, this is some kind of hot, you know, my butt in the hallway, and I'm like, what? There. And somebody, you know, they're like, Phyllis, there's, um, there's a guy in a wheelchair, and he's actually a vet, he has a sign and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and the building is not, like, equipped for anybody to shoot him. So they're jumping off the stairs. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, I feel so, what? I mean, what are we going to do? So everybody I'm working with rushes out to help him out. <laughs> so he crawls up the stairs and then carries the wheelchair. And he rolls into the room and I was feeling so bad because I'm just like, oh my god, we should have thought of this like before we started auditioning. Like, you know, it's just thoughtful, right? So he does a great audition and everyone is blown away. I'm blown away, my casting director's blown away, the girl that's shooting the um, auditions is blown away, and we're like, wow. So I, again, I'm like, I'm so sorry that we were not able to accommodate you. So he rolls out of the room with this sign, and you know, he does the same thing. He falls out of the wheelchair, he crawls down the stairs, somebody, you know, takes his wheelchair. And so my casting director said, to his assistant, ask him if he's really, like, you know, in the wheelchair. And she's like, you can't ask him that. You can't ask him that. You know, like, you know, and so finally, on the last stair, he was at the bottom, just getting in the wheelchair again, ready to roll away. Um, <laughs> she, she whispered in his ear, are you really, you know, handicapped? And he said, what did you say? I can run a half mile in world record time. <laughs> And he still did a great job. I mean, he was definitely the man for the role. And he really, oh, one of the things she asked him when he said that was, why did you, why did you do that? You didn't have to really do all this. And he said, I really, I really want this part. Mm -hmm.